Hi guys, this is Mo Stevens. I'm going to talk about Ikajo, which is our uh, sixth technique, Oshitoshi. I'm going to talk in terms of the theory of the wall that Chris has been talking to you about. This is Ken. Ken is one of my black belts here. On our Oshitoshi, he's going to do uh, overhead strike. Because he's already off balance, I don't have to steal his balance the way we do when he's static. So as he does this, I'm stepping outside, rolling his arm, getting this little row, and I'm going to throw my thumb underneath so that I can push the elbow straight up as I step in. And if you look, you can see straight up and down, right here, all of his weights on this north and south axis. I have found out that if I step through here, which is where most people step, Ken can step through and get out of it. So where I step, I'm going to step right toward his little toe. So I'm stepping right toward his little toe, dropping his elbow right on this wall that we keep talking about, and he will go right down there. That's the tall Oshitoshi, or because it's not here. So he's going to attack me, and I'm going one, two. If we look at the same thing a little bit lower, instead of taking the elbow right up there, when I take his elbow up here, look what his shoulder does. When I take it over there, look what his shoulder does. When I take it through, his shoulder leads. When we do the, the more traditional Ikacho, I'm doing the same thing. Oh, now I'm doing it right here. I'm doing exactly the same thing. Same inside foot. That leads him straight down north and south. His shoulder now has to lead on the wall. I'm stepping through, and that's where I take him. And you're going to see really traditional people will then step back out to get the, uh, the finish. The third application I'm going to do is a ten-con motion. And I found out a long time ago, this rack, that a lot of people want to step out here and bring it this way. You can see right now, Ken's totally on balance. If I try and throw him, I can't. He's a brick wall. So I found that if we take this down and then push this into his ear again, if you look, it's almost that same north and south again. And now I'm going to turn. There's the wall right here. If I keep pushing that way, he's going to go double weighted again. So I'm going to bring him around on this outside toe. If I keep him at this level, he regains balance. So right here, I have to keep dropping it down, and he falls. Q and A. Yes. All right. Um, can you now do that from an attack where you beat his power zone still yeah. up high? Yeah. If he's talking, uh, Chris is talking about overhead strike, and I step in, and then I'm taking right now here the same. Way. And it doesn't make a difference what you do with hands. You know, you can step in and grab and turn around. I can step in and grab and grab it. I can just leave with my hands. Because he's going to go to the same place. It's down and around. The problem that we have is when I come up here and I try and take him right down here, if I don't take it any lower, he's strong. This has to keep going. Now. I see a weight distribution occurring. He's not 50-50 weighted. He's more weighted on his right foot. You called it a toe point. Would that be the big toe or the little toe you're working with? When I do, when I do this one, yeah, your ten con. And I'm stepping around. Mm -hmm. He's on that foot right now. Watch yep. the distribution. It's going to come back and come over. He's double weighted right now. If I try and throw him forward. He's double weighted. So now I'm not going to throw him off the inside toe. I'm going to throw him off the outside of the little toe. It keeps coming down and around. He's falling. His weight is going one, double weight, and I keep this going to where it falls over that little toe. Is that what you want? Yes, thank you very much.